metal is a difficult material to work with. It's very, very unwilling. It's, it's strong, it's hard. And when I work with it, I always feel like I'm imposing my will onto it. I'm forcing it. I came to metal work in sort of a devious way. At the Rhode Island School of Design, I went to art school not knowing exactly what I was going to study. And I chant, they had uh, an exhibition of, of the jewelry department, and I just saw it and I just wanted to learn it. I thought it was great. I thought, this is it. I want to know how to make such objects. I work in my studio, which is on a third floor in an old house. The studio has plenty of light. Um, it's a very comfortable place to work in. I don't like the, the, the term married metals. I, I prefer to call my work inlay, even though it's technically wrong. It's because um, I need color for the inlay, I use a lot of different metals. I use bronze, copper, brass, nickel, silver, different carats of gold for different colors. Because I work so much with Japanese alloys, such as Shakudo and Shibuichi, I felt compelled to make a piece about the Japanese culture. This, of course, uh, was inspired by my love of gardening. Ikebana means flower arranging in Japanese, and I thought it was sort of a good idea to have the wearer make her own arrangement by flipping those beads over and creating new combinations. To create a change, I use materials that I have collected, and um, rather than imposing my will onto them, I let them dictate their uh, idea to me. For instance, I have a piece of raw lapis lazuli. Shards that I find in my garden when I'm planting. a piece of glass that looks like oil that's on top of water. I was experimenting with some glass rods that I have here in the studio, and I created these drips. They look like blood drips. And I just love them. I thought, well, you know, what can I do with this? My sources of inspiration are also nature and icons from the past. The piece that I submitted for the Raphael Prize is called Opus Tessellatum. I wanted to find an excuse to do this piece. And I knew it was going to be labor intensive. And I read about this competition, I said, perfect, this is perfect. Now I just can make it and it'll fit the theme. Opus means work in Latin and Tessellatum means work with tesserae. Tesserae are fragments of stone or glass that the craftsmen of the past used to create mosaics, to create a complete image. Well, I was looking um, f for um, a traditional mosaic pattern, um, and I was also looking for something that was pleasing, that was um, extremely decorative. I opened a book on mosaics, leafed through, and um, chose this one. My intent wasn't to reproduce the entire piece. I just wanted to make sure when I chose the image that, it, um, that the reference to ancient Greek mosaic was clear. The medals in, in that necklace are silver, shakudo, shibuichi, bronze, copper, brass, and gold. I actually constructed the image first, and then I cut it into tesserae, into little squares. It was like a very complicated puzzle at one point. If you lost one piece, or if you, if you solder it to the wrong piece, the, 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 the image would stop making sense completely. So I had to number every single tesserae. I had to make sure that it went horizontally and vertically together. I had to hold every little piece, polish it, cut it, uh, inlay it. So it took its toll. 
the theme of uh, transformation is addressed, um, I think, on, on more than one level. If you see the piece from above lying flat, you think mosaic. When you pick it up and uh, put it around your neck, it completely transforms itself into a piece of jewelry. The gesture of lifting this piece changes it from a static architectural element into uh, now a more alive art form. <laughs> oh, it, it's transforming in a way that you know, I'm never going to make a piece like this again, ever. This is it. <laughs>you take your drawing and bring it to the bench. I would first select my materials. Silver, shafu dough and gold. Now I have to build a frame which will be the outline of the piece. I'm going to cut some wire and I take my wire and I score it to get to get the angles. Now I will bend the wire to conform to the angle. So when I have my wires ready, I solder them together, creating the outline of the piece. Then I will trace that outline onto a sheet of silver and cut around it. So for example, here the design has been glued on top of the silver and uh, I'm going to start the process of inlay. I drill a hole in the form I'm going to cut out and I'm going to cut out part of my pattern. Now I'm going to select the metal that I'm going to fit into, into that negative space. This is bronze. I put paint on one side. I take my piece, put it on top, and I trace with, with a pointed tool. I trace the outline. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to inlay a circle of uh, shakudo into the silver. I have to make sure that the piece will fit in and that the fit is as tight as possible. I think I can attempt to right here. It's in. And now I'm going to solder it. I'm going to flux my piece. Flux keeps the metal clean and I'm ready to solder it. Now the solder is flowing. The next step is to pickle the piece. A pickle is a mild acid solution, it will clean the oxides. Once your piece has been soldered and pickled, it will look something like that. And it is ready to be formed now. You put your piece on a mandrel and you just tap lightly on it to curve it. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the frame. I would curve my silver to fit the front, the frame and the back. When all the components are soldered together, the frame will look like the edge of the piece. When the piece is cleaned, the edges will look so and uh, the middle will be hollow. Here I'm back at the sample. I'm just going to show you how I clean a small inlay. Cleaning actually is fun. You know, you get this piece that's covered with solder and then little by little, as you remove the solder, your pattern starts to appear. Okay, definitely ready now. Let's move to the polishing motor.
Now the last step is uh, to put the patina onto your piece. The patina will change the color of the metals. As you remember, the circle that's dark now has been cut from this piece of metal, which is called shakudo, inlaid into the silver and turned black through the process of patination. In this brooch, you can see other metals that have been changed through the process of patination. I am very interested in revival of decoration. And I'm, I'm actually really happy that um, other people are. Yes, because I think it's, uh, it's been put down a lot. You know, it's like, oh, it's decoration, it's not legit. Well, I, I think decoration is great. If something is well made, it is as legitimate as, uh, say, a painting or a sculpture. No, actually, I do wear jewelry, and this is really embarrassing. <laughs> I wear like the junkiest jewelry you've ever seen. It's true, you know, I go and I buy these like really gaudy earrings that, that have lots of fake diamonds and rubies in them.